This is the colouring caddy. It would make the most fantastic gift for the little budding artist in your life. Hi, I'm Emma from Studio 77 and on this video I'm going to show you how to make the colouring caddy. This was originally part of the 77 Club. I will pop a link to the pattern and to the club in the description below. This is a super fun make. It takes a few minutes to cut it out but actually when you start sewing it sews together really quick. It's got loads of features that I know you're going to love. So on the back we have got a clear vinyl pocket so you can show off your artwork if you want to or just show your favourite book in there. You've also got a slip pocket behind that you can put larger colouring books in there. It has a double zipper on the top so you can open it all the way around and it can lay out flat and you can have all of your artist materials ready to go. You have got quite a lot of pockets in here. So you've got um, pen slots at the top. We've got um, a larger pocket here. We've got smaller pockets here. There's a zipper pocket on the other side so that you can put larger things or just chuck them in when you need to go. You've got more pen slots or crayon slots at the top as well. So you can really pack everything in here. And then if you want to grab it and go, you've got those handles, a quick kind of rush, or you can also do up the zipper too. It is a really fun make. I hope you're going to love it. Please do, if at any point you're enjoying this tutorial, please do hit that thumbs up button. And if you have any comments, questions or queries at all through this video, please do pop them in the comments box below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So let's go. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to cut out all of your pattern pieces and you're going to want to interface them as it tells you in the cutting list and the cutting chart. It also tells you on each pattern piece as well. Within the pattern, you're going to find a sheet like this, a page like this, page number eight. And this tells you, as I do in all my patterns, just a little bit more about the pattern and the features. But one thing that I have added on this pattern is that I have added each pattern piece on this picture here, on this image, so that this will help you with your layout. This is a super scrap friendly uh, pattern, so you want to make sure that they all go together exactly how you want them. When To help you to do this, when I cut out, I also lay them out as they're going to be within the bag. So hopefully that will help you. Also, you will find these little pattern tabs that you can cut out so that you can attach them like I have to your pattern pieces. That's going to help you when you're prepping. You can see that there are letters on some of the patterns as well. That is to help you with this layout too. So it goes A, B, C, D is the back of the pocket, E, F, G, H. So there is a sort of um, system and to help it flow as well. Like I say, check this picture here and that's going to help you. So you're going to cut out all your pattern pieces. You're also going to need a small piece of bias binding. It doesn't have to be cut on the bias. It just needs to be folded like bias tape. You could use fold over elastic as well or even ribbon if you want to. That is to go over the slip pocket on the back of the clear, which is the clear vinyl, just to seal that edge. You're also going to want to cut your zipper tape and add two zipper pulls so that that's all prepped and ready. You're going to want to do your smaller zipper as well. You can find all the measurements for that within the pattern itself. You're going to want to also have your regular sewing tools on hand, like your scissors, pins, clips, something to mark fabric with. I'm going to use a size 90 universal needle. You may want to use a Microtex as well, but universal should be fine. I'm also going to be using double-sided tape. And I'm also going to add in a couple of labels, but you don't have to do that, of course. Okay, so to start with, we're going to prepare all of our pockets. So you're going to want to take pattern piece five, eight, 13, and 15. And we want to fold each one in half wrong sides together. Give that a press along to crease it so that the bottom edges are matching, the bottom raw edges. And then we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch or two millimetres from the edge along that top fold. And we're going to repeat that on all four pieces. Also, while we're on this step, I'm also going to do pattern piece 16 in exactly the same manner. And we're going to repeat that as well with pattern piece two. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to put those to one side for later. Next, we're gonna move on to the handles, which is pattern piece 18. And we're gonna grab one of them and we're gonna make a mark down the middle of that piece. And I'm gonna repeat that on the other handle as well. And then we're gonna fold and press each long edge into that line. And then once that's pressed, we're gonna fold it again and press it again to keep it really nice and crisp. And I'm gonna do that on both of the pieces. Once that's really nicely pressed, I'm then gonna top stitch along each long edge and that is gonna be an eighth of an inch or two millimeters from the edge. Now those are sewn, I'm gonna pop those to one side as well. And we're gonna move on to the outer slip pocket. Okay, so I've got my pattern piece 16, which I stitched just now. That's ready to go. And But we now need to work on pattern piece 17, which is the clear vinyl. And we've got our bias binding, or um, doesn't have to be cut on the bias, you could use ribbon like I mentioned before as well. And I'm just going to clip that onto that top edge, but the raw edge up to the fold on the inside. And then I'm going to stitch close to that bottom edge all the way along. And I'm gonna use a slightly longer top stitch to do that. You could also do a stitch along the top if you wanted to as well. Then we're gonna take our back pattern piece one. So for me, it's this purple stripe. As explained in the instructions as well, you want to make sure that your fusible fleece is attached to the back of both of pattern piece ones and they need to be cut so that the interfacing is out of the seam allowance. So you're gonna either fold back on the pattern piece you're either going to fold back the seam allowance like this so that you can reuse it just by unfolding or you can cut it off and um, you're going to want to print it twice if you do that of course. So I've got my pattern piece one that I'm using for my back. I'm then going to lay down the pattern piece 16 on top which is the outer middle slip pocket and I'm lining up the two side edges and that bottom edge as well. Now you can either baste that in place and then baste the other one in place or you can do it in one which is what I'm going to do. I'm laying on that top slip pocket as well. I'm going to clip all the way around the outside or around those bottom three edges and then I'm going to baste within the seam allowance so about half a centimetre all the way around the edge with a long stitch. And then I'm going to pop that outer back to one side for later. Okay, next we're going to move on to the inside back lining. So we're going to do our pockets and we're going to start off with the pen slots that are at the top. So you want to grab pattern piece two and pattern piece three and we're going to lay it on them on top of each other. So pattern piece two is on the top of pattern piece three and we're lining up the two side edges and that bottom edge. I'm going to place a couple of pins in place just to hold them together and then on the pattern piece for pattern piece two we've got these gray lines and these are our stitch lines okay so you can lay that on like so and I'm just going to use my chalk pen here to mark on those lines so that I can see them and then we can go ahead and use a ruler to mark those lines on so that we're ready for stitching. I'll pop a link to this chalk pen that I like to use in the description as well in case you want to take a look. 
now those lines are all marked we can go ahead and stitch along those lines and I'm going to make sure that I double stitch or go back and forth with a really strong stitch at the tops of all of those because that's going to get a lot of wear and tear where all the pens and pencils are coming in and out. Okay, so we've got our pen slots all nicely stitched. We're gonna pop that to one side and we're gonna grab pattern piece four and pattern piece five that we stitched earlier. We did that top stitch there. We're gonna lay that on top of the other one. So four on, uh, sorry, five on top of four. Just pop a clip in. And we're gonna baste around those bottom three edges to hold those together. Before we do that, so that we can just go to the machine once, I'm also going to draw on those grey lines. So just like we did before, place that slightly on top, draw in those lines. And we're going to top stitch along those lines. Again, being sure to go backwards and forwards a few times at the top. Now that's stitched we're going to grab the pen slots that we stitched before and we're going to lay them right sides together and we're matching up that middle seam then we're going to stitch a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam along that edge I'm also going to add in my label to this seam as well Now, an optional thing you can do here is you can press open your seams or you can push them to one side. I'm going to push mine towards the bottom and I'm going to top stitch along that bottom edge there to keep my label down and keep everything really nice and flat. Once that's all sewn, you want to make sure that it matches the pattern piece one. You want to lay the pattern piece on one on top and just trim any excess if there is any. And then we're going to put it to one side. Then I'm going to grab all of my pieces for the inside front lining and we're going to work on the pocket first of all. So we're going to take pattern piece 10 first of all and our zipper. And we are going to lay our zipper well you can choose which way your zipper opens but i'm going to have mine opening on the left side and i'm going to place the front of the front one of pattern piece 10 because we've got two one is reversed i'm just going to put the reversed one to one side for a second i'm going to lay that on top and i'm going to use my double-sided tape to attach it to the zipper. Now you always want to make sure that you are using quilters double sided tape so that it doesn't kind of um, gum up your needle and make your machine unhappy. <laughs> so we're laying that right side down, matching up that bottom edge. And we're going to base that in place with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance or a couple of millimetres. Next, we're going to get our other pattern piece 10, the corresponding one, and we're going to lay that right side down, lining up those top edges again. I'm going to use some more double sided tape. You don't have to use double sided tape, but it does help a lot when you're sewing zippers. And I'm going to sew along that edge with a quarter of an inch or about 0.7 centimetres along that edge. Then I'm going to open that up and place the two pieces wrong sides together. And I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch or two millimetres from the edge. Next, we're going to grab the back of the zipper pocket, which is pattern piece 10. And we're going to place what we have just stitched on top. 
Now you want to make sure that the top edge of pattern piece 11 is aligned with the top edge of your zipper. I'm just going to pop a couple of clips in there to attach that and then we're going to baste all the way around the outside about half a centimeter to keep it all nicely together. Then I'm going to pop that to one side and we're going to work on the top and bottom pockets. So we want to have a pattern piece 12 and 13 and 14 and 15. And we're going to lay them on top of each other like I have here. So 15 goes on top of 14 and 13 goes on top of 12. And we're going to line up those bottom three edges on both pieces. And we're going to baste within the seam allowance five millimetres or about a quarter of an inch from the edge on both. Also, while we're doing this, we're going to grab pattern piece seven and pattern piece eight, and we're going to lay them on top of each other as well. Pattern piece eight on top of pattern piece seven. Lining up those bottom three edges, and we're going to baste that together as well. I'm going to pop this bottom piece to one side that is the piece that matches up with the zipper pocket and I'm going to take these top pieces which is 12 and 13 and I'm going to keep those together we're going to pop in the pen slots if you're going to want to put those in so we're going to do exactly the same as we did before we're going to draw them out with our chalk pen and then we're going to stitch those lines being sure to make a really nice secure stitch at the top And as you can see, I've tacked my label in there because I want to have a label there. We're then going to place those two pieces right sides together and then we're going to stitch with a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance along that edge. While I'm at the machine, I'm also going to grab those bottom two pieces, so the zipper pocket and the corresponding side pocket. And I'm going to lay those right sides together and again stitch with a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. OK, so once I've stitched those seams, I have then pushed the seam allowance on the bottom one to this right hand edge and then I've top stitched. On the top, I've opened up the seam and I have top stitched on the one side. I could have top stitched on the other side as well, but because I've only done it on this side, I want to make it the same so that it matches. Then we're going to get our middle strip, which is pattern piece nine. And we're going to lay that right sides together along that edge. I'm going to use my double sided tape again. And I'm going to stitch that a quarter of an inch from the edge. Okay, then I'm going to take my top piece and I'm going to lay that right sides together along that edge of pattern piece six, sorry, pattern piece nine, that middle strip. And I'm going to sew with a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance along that edge. We're going to open it up and then we're going to top stitch each edge to keep that seam allowance away from these two panels you're pushing the seam allowance into the middle okay now you may find that you need to cut away some of this bulk you've got quite a lot of bulk there so we can cut away these little kind of corners these little triangles to take away a little bit of the bulk and then help with that stitching Again, you're going to want to lay a pattern piece one on top and make sure that that is the same size as your other pieces. I'm going to pop that to one side and we're going to attach our handles. So for that, we're going to need our two pattern piece ones. So the one that we stitched the pockets onto earlier and the front. I'm going to grab our two handle pieces that we stitched earlier. And on pattern piece one, there is a notch mark. 
which I've cut out here. So we want to mark that onto our pieces. And that is going to be where the outside of our handle is going to go. So grab one of your handles. I'm going to place that on there. Pop a clip in, bend it around to match the other side and our other notch mark. Pop another clip in and then we're going to base within the seam allowance to keep the handle in place and we're going to repeat it with the other handle and the front pattern piece one. Then we're going to pop those two to one side and we're going to work on our zipper. So we're going to grab the long zipper and we're going to grab our pattern piece six which is the hinge and we're going to take our outer piece and we're going to place that right sides together and we're matching up the short edge of the zip with the short edge of the hinge and we're going to clip it to each end of the zipper and then we're going to baste it within the seam allowance along those two short edges. So then you've got a continuous loop with your zipper and the hinge. Then we're going to flip it over and we're going to sandwich the, hin the zipper in between the hinge. So we're going to grab our other hinge, which is our lining, and we're going to place it right sides to the right side of the outer with the zipper in the middle. So the right side of the lining is facing the back of the zipper. And again, we're going to clip on those two short edges, match up the other side, and we're going to stitch, looks a bit strange at this point, but we're going to stitch with a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance along those two edges. So it's going to look like that. Then we're going to flip it, just need to pull the zipper and it will flip so that it is wrong sides together. Okay, so you've got a continuous loop with a lining on the inside. Then we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch or two, two millimetres from each edge on that short, on those short edges. Also, if you want to, you can baste along the long edges of that hinge as well to keep it all nice and together. Next we want to attach our zipper to our outer pieces. So we're going to grab the outer back and the outer front. We're going to be working with the outer front to begin with. I'm just going to chop off those extra threads. And we want to mark the middle of each piece. Now because the pattern piece, if you have printed it, is cut on the fold, we've already got our halfway mark so we can just use that really easily to mark that on with. And while I'm here, I'm gonna do the same with the back. I'm gonna pop a clip in on the vinyl because I can't mark that as easily. Then I'm gonna find the middle of the zipper and mark that as well. And then we're going to lay the zipper right sides down and we're going to clip and then baste it all the way around the edge. And we're matching up those middle notch lines. Now when it comes to these corners, you're going to want to snip into your zipper tape by about half a centimetre at regular intervals. So I'm going about half a centimetre again along all the way around that area that we've got that curve that we're wanting the zipper to go into. Now be super careful with your zipper on this. If you're using a striped zipper, the zipper could unravel. So just bear that in mind that you're not going to snip into a striped zipper. I haven't found many other zippers that are an issue, but just be careful, test it out on your zipper if you are, if you are in any doubt.
So once that's all clipped, I'm then gonna baste that with a half a centimetre seam allowance. Okay, so now that's basted, we're gonna do the same, but we're gonna do it with the other side. Now, you may find it easier to unzip all the way. We're gonna grab our back piece, and we're gonna line up, so we've got it right sides together, and we're lining up those marks that we made earlier, the middle notch marks together. Now I'm going to flip the whole thing over because it's going to make it a little bit easier and open it out. And then I'm going to place my double sided tape all the way around and I'm going to do exactly what I did on the last side and baste it within the seam allowance. So about half a centimetre. And as you can see, that's all clipped in place and I'm going to base that within the seam allowance again, just like I did on the other side. Okay, so now we have got both the front and back panels attached to the zipper tape basted around the edge. Then we're gonna attach our lining pieces. So we're gonna grab our two lining pieces and we're gonna mark them, and we're gonna mark them down the middle, just like we did before. So we're making mark or notches, top and bottom. And we also want to mark them in the middle as well. So I'm just gonna fold my pattern piece in half. This is pattern piece one that I'm using for this. And I can mark that along that seam allowance. Same on the other side. Okay, then we're gonna mark the middle of the pieces that we have just sewn, the outer pieces. I'm just gonna make a little notch mark there as well. It's gonna help us. Okay, so then we're gonna get our front lining, which is the one with the zipper pouch in it, and we're gonna lay it right sides down. So we want the outer, the front outer, to be right side up, although you're gonna have the back on top of it. You're gonna squish the back in a little bit, and then we're gonna lay the front lining right sides down. 
So you have to almost ignore that the, that the back, that that back is there. Okay, we're going to push it out of the way so that we can get to that front. And we're going to clip or pin where possible all the way around. I want to make sure your zipper's really out of the way. And we're matching and we're matching up the notch marks okay so we've got our notch mark there we've got our notch mark there sorry not the outer one we're ignoring the outer one squish that we can really squish that in actually let's squish that in out of the way match up those marks And continue round, clipping it all the way around. Again, we are not sewing onto that back piece. Okay, so now I've clipped all the way around the outside. I'm now ready to stitch that on. I'm gonna use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'm gonna go all the way around, but I am gonna leave a turning gap of around four or five inches on one side. If you want to as well, you can cut down some of that seam allowance to reduce the bulk and cut out one or two layers. That's gonna help as well. Okay, so now I've cut off all those corners, I'm then going to turn it the right way out. Now, I just wanted to point out, as I've been sewing, my fusible fleece has come off of some part of the outer piece. I'm not going to worry about that, I can press that from the outside a little bit later to keep that in place. So I'm reaching through, I'm going to take out the outer piece first, and I'm going to flip the uh, front lining and outer piece the right way out. Okay, so that's looking really good. We've still got our turning hole. We'll come back to that a bit later. Now we're going to do that other piece. So we're doing a really similar thing. I'm going to place the wrong side face down. Okay, so that's, we're working on the outer piece. So it's the wrong side of the back outer piece. We're going to grab our lining for that piece. And by all means, you could flip each piece of the lining around. It doesn't really matter which is back and front. Um, but that's how I've called it for the purposes of putting it all together. So we want to make sure the handles are on the inside or facing down. And we want to really squish that front piece in, okay? Squish it right the way, out of the way. And then we're going to place it right sides down. And we're going to do the same as we did before clip all the way around the outside and then we're going to stitch it with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that's all clipped around. Like I say, I'm then going to stitch it, but I am going to leave a turning gap in one side of around five to six inches, just like I did before. 
Now, if you're finding any of these seams tricky or bulky, you should move up to a larger needle. I suggest a 110 jeans needle for this. It will also be useful when, for when we're doing the top stitching in the next steps. So now we need to reach through just like we did before and we're going to turn it the right way out. But we also need to cut off the little triangles on the corners, I almost forgot that. So we're just going to snip out those triangles on the four corners. Okay, so it's completely turned out the right way and now all we have to do is top stitch around each side so before I do that I'm just going to fold under that turning hole you want to fold it under and then you can use pins or clips probably going to be easier with pins to be honest You can either, you can hand baste the turning hole under if you want to, or you can put pins in like I am. And we're going to catch it as we do our top stitching to close those turning holes. You're going to do that on each side and you're going to stitch all the way around the edge. Now, like I said earlier, you may want to switch to a 110 jeans needle for this because that's going to help you get through all of those layers. It's worth noting as well that this bit is quite tricky to sew because you're trying to sew through so many different layers. Now, if you think that your machine is not up to it, you could omit this step as well. I definitely recommend that you start on the front of the bag because that obviously doesn't have the vinyl, the clear vinyl. So if it, you find that machine doesn't stand up to it, you can unpick it. And then you would just hand stitch the turning holes closed. If you can top stitch, it does help to add structure to the bag, so it is good. But like I say, it may be too many layers for your machine to handle. But do try a larger jeans needle because that definitely helps. hope that you love this tutorial coming up on the screen right now is my munch box pattern I think you're gonna love that too it is the perfect size for lunch on the go it has got so many features that I think you're gonna love do let me know if you make this pattern in the comments below and I'll see you on the next video